This is a Jaguar New Yell sewing machine, and it works with the Nintendo Game Boy. Now you're probably thinking this is kind of a weird mix. Game Boys and sewing machines? Who could have come up with something like that? But it's not quite as odd as it sounds. Digital interfaces for sewing and embroidery machines were still fairly new technology, with the earliest models in the 1980s selling for tens of thousands of dollars. Computers, especially ones small enough to fit on a sewing machine, were expensive to develop and manufacture. But what if there's a way to harness an existing, cheap technology to give a sewing machine its digital interface? Enter the Game Boy Color, Nintendo's sleek new handheld system. With a launch price of around $70, or about $100 adjusted for inflation, this was the answer Japanese sewing machine manufacturer Jaguar International was looking for. Additionally, they could use the Game Boy to target this machine to a younger, more tech-savvy market, a market with a rapidly declining interest in home sewing. Maybe the Game Boy could make sewing seem hip and trendy again. I have two sewing machines here, the Jaguar New Yell JN100, no relation to the Atari Jaguar, and the Singer Isaac 1500. If these look like the same sewing machine to you, you are totally correct. Other than the branding and what came in the box, these are the exact same sewing machine. It was first developed by Jaguar and then licensed to Singer who rebranded it and sold it under their name. So let's take a look at them. Their translucent, colorful design was a major trend back in the late 90s and early 2000s, following the success of Apple's iMac. Phones, microwaves, video game systems, and yes, even sewing machines were getting the fantastic color treatment. Now, I don't want to bore you with how a sewing machine works. I barely know a thing about sewing, and so setting both of these up took me a while. Again, these are literally just normal sewing machines. The only difference is that there's a link cable coming out of the back to hook it up to a Game Boy. You run a thread through the top part here, as well as below the needle, and you use the pedal attachment to start sewing. You can adjust the speed, sew in reverse, and extend the tray for stability with larger pieces of fabric, really all the normal things you'd expect a sewing machine to do. On the back of the machine, there's a plug for a power cord, whereas the Japanese New Yell model, the power cord is hardwired in. Above that is where you can find the link cable. Also, I just want to mention that it's a sewing machine. It's super heavy. Shipping this guy from Japan cost me $200, so just be warned if you're wanting to add one of these to your collection. Now let's talk about the differences between this Japanese New Yell and the US Isaac. Actually, the pink one I have is a New Yell Deluxe, which is the same machine but with a different bundle, and it was available in 2001. The first iteration of the New Yell didn't come with a Game Boy at all, instead assuming that most Japanese households would already have one. With the Deluxe bundle, they included a Game Boy Pocket. With the Singer Isaac in the US, all machines were bundled with a teal Game Boy Color. Both the New Yell and the Isaac include an instructional VHS and a copy of the operation software on a Game Boy cartridge. The operation software that comes with both of these systems is pretty interesting, and it's about the same between the US version and the Japanese version. In Japan, the machines are bundled with Rakudaku Mishin, or Easy Easy Sewing Machine, whereas here it's simply called Sewing Machine Operation Software. It was developed by Natsume and released by the Jaguar International Corporation. With this software, you can easily browse patterns, buttonholes, stitches, and letters. It's primarily for embroidery, featuring things like jumping dolphins and little stars, but there are options for more normal stitches too. The Japanese version also includes hiragana text. It also allows you to create and save custom patterns, although unfortunately there's a limit of only 20 lines you can use to create your shape, so intricate custom designs are out the window. There's nothing remotely resembling a game here. This is just software to tell the sewing machine what to do. Without the cartridge inside the Game Boy and hooked up to the machine, it's just going to sew a normal stitch by default, with no way to change to the other patterns. All right, now that you've seen the Game Boy sewing machines in action, let's move on to the history of this product. In the spring of 2000, Jaguar International released the New Yo. Their website initially had a total of six colors available. Pink, orange, blueberry, pale green, white, and violet, but stopped selling orange, violet, and blueberry in early 2001. It retailed for 49,800 yen, roughly 500 US dollars, which was around 700 adjusted for inflation. The Deluxe Bundle eventually replaced this initial version, and includes a foot pedal, a Game Boy Pocket, a copy of Daku Daku Mishin, and an instructional VHS tape to help you set up and understand your machine. Jaguar International's US consultant Ken Liu called the machine a success in Japan. He told the press that it had captured 10% of the market share in Japan for computerized and digitized sewing machines in just one year. In 2000, they were already looking ahead to their next machine, called the Nuoto. 
Jaguar spokesperson Yoshiharu Nishi told the National Post that they were negotiating with Nintendo to have the sewing machine include three character cartridges of full-color Pokemon embroidery designs. They expected the machine to cost somewhere around $600. The Pokemon cartridges never happened, unfortunately, but the Nuoto machine was real, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Sewing machine giant Singer licensed and rebranded the new yell in America as the Isaac, named for Singer's eccentric founder Isaac Singer. They showed off the product to potential retailers at the International Housewares Show in Chicago of 2000, with the machines hitting stores around November later that year. People at the International Housewares Show loved it! Spokespeople told the press that the response had been phenomenal, especially to those under 30 years of age. President of Singer Tom Noring was feeling pretty optimistic. With declining interest in sewing among the younger generation, he told the press, We think Isaac can play an important role in creating an entirely new generation of sewers. It was Singer's 150th anniversary, a fact that can also be found on the sewing machine itself. And having just bounced back from Chapter 11 bankruptcy the year before, they knew their future rested on getting more young people into sewing. A spokesperson noted that even though it was more high-tech than many sewing machines in its price range, it wasn't looking to compete with the multi-thousand dollar machines. It had a suggested retail price of $700. Singer even took the machine on tour to several different sewing supply stores around the U.S., doing demonstrations and hosting one-day summer camps they called Kids Can Sew, where they would sew and embroider their own pillowcases using the Isaac sewing machine. They also launched a now-defunct website, meetisaac.com. While I wouldn't call the Isaac a complete and utter failure, it certainly did not do quite as well as the Jaguar series had been doing in Japan. The younger audience the Isaac was aimed at actually found it pretty easy to use, but it baffled most adults outside those who were already hardcore sewing hobbyists, who mostly just found it amusing. An article in the engineering magazine EDM also suggests that Singer was at least beginning to work on a second model of the machine, but it was scrapped due to slow-growing sales. Singer wouldn't share with me how many units were sold, but it seems like the machines were available at just about every dedicated sewing shop. Now let's hop back to Japan, where Jaguar had just released the Nuoto, an upgraded sewing machine they were selling for 59,800 yen, so about $100 more than the Nuyo. From the beginning, this machine was meant to work with more advanced embroidery projects. An add-on for the system, the EM2000 Embroidery Unit, was sold separately on their website and included two brand new cartridges that would only work with the Nuoto model, Mojishu and Katoshu, which roughly translate to Character Letter Collection and Cut Collection. The Mojishu software includes the English alphabet, hiragana, katakana, kanji, and symbols in three different sizes. The cut shoe software includes more interesting clip art, full color embroidery like teddy bears, cats, and flowers. Also sold separately for 6,800 yen was Mario Family, the most interesting software of all for this machine, which would allow you to embroider a ton of Mario characters like Peach, Yoshi, and Wario. No Pokemon character cartridges to be found here, unfortunately, but Mario Family was just as cool. All of these things were available for purchase on their website up until at least late 2002, where the Internet Archive just starts to turn up errors. Interestingly enough, the price never seemed to drop, so clearance deals would have had to have been found at local retailers. And now it's time for some fun facts! In 2001, Nintendo and Jaguar also had plans to release a follow-up character embroidery software that would have been called Curvy Family. A complete version of the software along with the Nuoto sewing machine were demoed at the 2001 Nintendo Space World, and they fully intended to release the software later that year. The cartridge included 36 different embroidery images based on the Kirby series, most of which were from the somewhat recent title Kirby and the Crystal Shards. The software was cancelled for reasons unknown, but presumably due to poor sales of Mario Family. The Game Boy sewing machine made it to market, but it was far from the first iteration of home ec meets video games technology. In 1987, Nintendo actually demoed a knitting peripheral for the NES, shown off at the Consumer Electronics Show to test the waters. According to former Nintendo Game Master Howard Phillips, he also personally demonstrated the product to a Toys R Us chairman. This product was never released, but even stranger, there was a knitting game released for the Famicom Disk System. It was called I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater, which was really just a cheap program for designing custom sweaters. The Jaguar New Year's sewing machine was sold in some stores, but could also be ordered on Jaguar's website. With your order, they would send you some free gifts. Unfortunately, their website was mostly photos, which have long since been erased by whatever hosting service they were using, but looking at the file name shows that they were likely phone accessories and cases that matched the colors of the sewing machines. 
Anyways, that is pretty much everything you will ever need to know about the Game Boy sewing machines. If you like learning about the obscure side of video game history or just video game history in general, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.